Welcome, welcome to you all to our Sunday video worship. Wherever you are, you are very welcome. In all the divergence of the world and all the uncertainty in the future, all the unknowns we face, let us come back to our source, love grace, peace, God. Let us be here as we are, whoever we are. This is our home. This is our worship.
Father God, as we meet together today, wherever we are and whatever the time, help us to treat this as a special time when we honour you. By putting aside a period of time, by listening to the stories of our faith within our worshipping community, by giving you the glory on this day. Let us be open to awesome signs, wonders and stories as we come into your presence. Help us to own your stories, to allow you truly to be present in our lives, to say yes to your healing touch and to faithfully follow your laws. Heavenly Father, sometimes we choose to follow our own story, to ignore your laws and the learning we have from your word. Forgive us when we fail to prioritise creation, when we place our own self-interest above the welfare of your children. We are sorry. Merciful God, allow your stories to speak to us today so that we may also see, understand and worship. Amen. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, reading from verse 20. In time to come, your children will ask you, why did the Lord our God command us to obey all these laws? Then tell them, we were slaves of the king of Egypt, and the Lord rescued us by his great power. With our own eyes we saw him work miracles and do terrifying things to the Egyptians and to their king and to all his officials. He freed us from Egypt to bring us here and give us this land, as he had promised our ancestors he would. Then the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these laws and to honour him. If we do, he will always watch over our nation and keep it prosperous. If we faithfully obey everything that God has commanded us, he will be pleased with us. Amen. Our second reading is from John, chapter 9, reading from verses th verse 13 to 25. It's headed, the Pharisees investigate the healing. Then they took to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. The day that Jesus made the mud and cured him of his blindness was a Sabbath. The Pharisees then asked the man again how he had received his sight, and he told them, he put some mud on my eyes, I washed my face, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, The man who did this cannot be from God, for he does not obey the Sabbath law. Others, however, said, How could a man who is a sinner perform such miracles as these? And there was a division among them. So the Pharisees asked the man once more, you say he cured you of your blindness. Well, what do you say about him? He is a prophet, the man answered. The Jewish authorities, however, were not willing to believe that he had been blind and could now see until they called his parents and asked them, Is this your son? You say that he was born blind. How is it then that he can now see? His parents answered, we know that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he is now able to see, nor do we know who cured him of his blindness. Ask him. He is old enough, and he can answer for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that anyone who said he believed that Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why his parents said, he is old enough, ask him. A second time they called back the man who had been born blind and said to him, promise before God that you will tell the truth. We know that this man, Kiwadu, is a sinner. I do not know if he's a sinner or not, the man replied. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I can see. Amen. His story is our story. A story 
that unites us. Look around you, do you see the connection? His story is their story. Those people from the past, the Israelites following the law, the Pharisees upset by rules broken. His story tore up the rule book, reset our understanding, set us free from restrictive traditions, encouraged us to focus on love. His story is a love story, transforming lives, uniting us in purpose, commanding us to love. His story is our story, a story that unites us. Look around you, see the love, see Jesus. I remember my gran always used to to greet anyone with, and what's your story? <laughs> what is your story? Stories are so important. Our Bible passages today take us to stories. The story of how it's important that we tell the story, particularly of the the Passover, the Exodus, a story so central for Judaism and to some extent for Christianity. Tell the children the story and the story has continued to be told and celebrated. And the New Testament story, a different kind of story, a story that tells us one of the the healing miracles, a story of transformation, a story that would be told often and would influence so many others. These stories remind us of how God's story is interwoven with our story. I remember one of my College lecturers used to talk about the, the collision of narrative and the way that, that God's story interacts with our story. Maybe the telling of those stories has become less frequent, less significant, less relevant in, in recent times. And how we need to, to restore the telling of the stories of love. A wee bit too much of a narrative of hatred, suspicion, cynicism, otherness. We need to tell the stories, the good news of God's love for all. Last Sunday in Ardgower and Strontian and Kingerloch churches, I had asked everyone to, to think, what would it be if you were able to, to go back in time? What would you want to say to your younger self? Well, here are some of the 
responses. I asked folk in church, what would you want to say to your younger self? Be happy. Just be brave. You are always special to Jesus. Follow your dream. Find time for family and others. I wish I'd come to the Highlands earlier. Be brave in standing up for what you know to be right. Jesus has it in hand. Not every itch has to be scratched. Listen to the wisdom of parents. Be brave. Do what you want and not what others want you to do. Be confident. You don't have to be someone else or better. I wish I'd done it sooner. Would like to have more confidence. Don't be afraid or ashamed of your faith. Ignore convention. Go for it. Be honest and kind to all. I wish I had done better things. Have more confidence in yourself. Be kind and encourage the next generation to do the same. Don't worry about stupid things. Always seek God's guidance and pray in all circumstances. Learn to read God's word soon in life. Don't worry. It's going to work out. Slow down. This too shall pass. Just do your best. Don't worry too much about what others think. Be happy to give things a go. It gets better. Go for it. Be more patient with your elders. You are good enough and are loved. Aim higher than you think you can. Of all the stories that we tell, the most frequent and the most influential are the stories that we tell ourselves. And we need to, I need to be more intentional about allowing God's story to collide with my story. God of all, we bring to you the concerns of the world in a week when we remember World Humanitarian Day. To our dismay, there are more and more places in the world requiring humanitarian assistance. There is suffering through drought, flooding and natural disasters made worse by human failure to act or made worse by human interaction in wars, in not overcoming the overwhelming temptation of human greed and power. There are people hurting, not just physically, people who are feeling outcast in their communities, schools, workplaces, even in their families. We pray for the ability to write stories with creative possibilities, including forgiveness and relationship. And we pray for your church 
that it will truly be a welcoming space for all. Give us grace to speak up for ourselves, not out of fear, but out of love. We offer up to you our greatest concerns and our experiences of marvellous joys. Loving God, we pray for your peace to fill us and your will to move us, that we may, in our communities, consistently communicate the story of your great and generous love. Amen. With all our prayers, we bring our offerings, all that we have, all that we are, all that in God's goodness we're yet to be. O Lord, open our eyes, help us to see evidence of your great and abundant love. Today the gifts we bring show our love for you and for our communities. Take these gifts and open others' eyes to your blessings. Take the gifts that you have gifted us and allow them to be developed and to be used for your will wherever we are and throughout the world. And all our praying we bring together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. By the banks and the breeze, by the macker and the box, on the roads and the paths of Scotland, on the islands and the hills, in the forests and the fields. In the crannies and the nooks of Scotland Wherever we come from, wherever we're going Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing, whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland in the schools and the jails, in the castles and the crofts, in the shops and the schemes of Scotland, in the stadiums and kirks, in the villages and towns, in the bingos and the chip shops of Scotland. Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing Whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland and the downs, in the yeses and the noes, in the twists and the turns of Scotland, in the old and the new, in the haves and the nots, in the dreech and the dry of Scotland. Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland Whatever we're facing Whatever we're feeling Jesus walks beside us in Scotland 
Wherever we come from, wherever we're going, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're feeling, Jesus walks beside us in Scotland. God's story. We celebrate our story, part of a divine narrative of love at work in the world. Send us out away from this moment of worship to share our stories wherever we are, to share God's story, God of healing, and hope. And may you know of God's blessing from Father, Son and Holy Spirit with you, with all those you love and those you should love today, throughout this week and always. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon Shine upon